So we will see uh, the another important topic uh, called the, the fluid motion uh, in the combustion chamber. This uh, the various topic uh, basically. So your see, this is nothing but the turbulence level of your uh, gas which is, is flowing in, inside your engine respect to the engine speed. You see here when, when the engine speed or uh, engine RPM is going to be higher, the intensity of the turbulence is going to be higher. Okay. And you see important thing, okay. Uh, this is very much important. Here the spill motion. Going to is the first uh, first diagram which explains the spill motion within the engine cylinder. Okay, and you have different methods to generate the spill motion. See, I told you uh, the, the combustion chamber is nothing but the place where the air and fuel gets mixed and uh, you're going to get the combustion out of it. And that will happen about the piston. Okay, that will happen about uh, about about the piston. So you can create the turbulence when the turbulence, or you can also create the spill. So this is spill motion. Okay, well, so well, okay, so well, motion, and uh, and again, uh, you can see how this is the air flow. Okay, and again, we have different walls and all the or configuration, you have port configuration because of two stroke engine. Okay, and uh, the air entry, how the air is entering to the cylinder, uh, maybe it can be either in a tangential direction. You see, the, the air is entering in the tangential direction. And it is reaching the combustion chamber. And again, you see, this is the air flow, uh, okay, uh, which is entering into the intake, uh, intake manifold uh, or the intake runner. So again, this is intake manifold, okay. And uh, you see, the, this is also entering into the wall, uh, basically the control wall, okay. How the air is going to enter. So uh, based on this, you are going to get a swirl motion for your configuration, okay. So that's the reason how the fluid, okay, fluid is nothing but air, and uh, and in the case of uh, uh, the combustion chamber where air and fuel is mixed, how how the how the flow is going to be uh, with respect to the turbulence, with respect to the spill, and how how that will have the influence on other systems. So the another important thing is nothing but uh, the swirl ratio. Swirl ratio is basically a dimensional parameter. Which is used to identify, uh, quantify the rotational motion within the, the cylinder, and this field ratio is uh, is also defined in two different ways uh, with respect to the angular speed, engine speed, and again uh, the swirl tangential speed, average distance speed, etc. Uh, so I'm going to take the swirl ratio in y-axis and the, you know the crank angle in x-axis. Uh, see, I, I you also know that you're going to have the intake compression. Power stroke, uh, basically the combustion is going to happen, and then the expansion. So here uh, is how the spill ratio is going to perform at the different stroke of your uh, engine. Uh, intake stroke, compression, combustion, and uh, the expansion. Uh, and again, uh, this uh, spill ratio is also a function of a crank angle. This is an example of a, a SA engine. Uh, and again, you know the spill is going to be high in the intake process. And because what happens, the air, the air entering, okay, uh, it causes more spill, okay, and again the spill, spill ratio is going to be higher uh, during the intake stroke. And, uh, and again, uh, then it is going to get reduced because of the drag you are going to have during the compression stroke, okay. And again, there is, again, again, this spill ratio is going to be higher because the pressure shoots up. Okay, I told you this fluid ratio is also based on the function of uh, the engine speed and uh, and again uh, it also depends on the average distance speed and uh, the angular speed of the, the engine. Okay, so in, in the case of the combustion, what happens is uh, uh, once once the, the combustion starts, the pressure shoots up, the pressure shoots up again. Uh, it's also a function of the fluid ratio. Again, your fluid ratio is going to be higher. Uh, and uh, and again uh, you're going to get the expansion because again expansion you're also going to have the drag similar to the drag what you get here that's the reason you get the set of good ratio here and uh, it's always important to have uh, uh, the 
high amount of swill so that uh, you get better performance. Uh, so even you need to look for uh, the design of your system. Basically, the combustion chamber system. You need to have high high swill ratio. Uh, so that uh, you need to have high swill ratio so that uh, uh, the air and the fuel mixer and the air mixer coming to the uh, striking with the, 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 the fuel. So you get uh, the better performance basically. Uh, this is the combustion chamber. You yeah, always remember that combustion chamber is the place where the combustion is going to take place. So, so here you need to design. This is all about you are going to design the combustion chamber with different types and different configuration uh, by ensuring that you are going to have uh, the different varieties like swill or turbulence or uh, the squish or any any irrespective of any forms. So you are ensuring that you are going to have at a uh, you are providing the uh, more volume, okay, and again you are providing uh, the place where complete mixture is going to uh, take place. Mixture in the sense air and fuel mixture. Uh, this is the two two different geometry that you have for a combustion chamber. Uh, the first geometry is the one having uh, the, the clearance volume uh, in the head, okay, the clearance volume having in, in the cylinder head, and B is the one. And this is the configuration where uh, uh, the bowl and the piston. Uh, this is a piston bowl. Okay, this is the bowl. Uh, this, uh, this is the piston bowl. Uh, and again, this is the crown, which is standing with the top portion of the piston. And uh, and you have a combination of uh, the piston uh, bowl and again the con crown configuration, the case of B configuration, basically. So here uh, the combustion chamber geometry. Uh, Basically, deals with uh, having uh, the most more amount of uh, or more clearance volume near the center of the cylinder, and higher the volume will also increase uh, your space and tumble, and it will also decrease the flame travel distance from most of the combustion process. It means your flame travel distance should be lesser. When the flame travel distance is lesser, what happens is uh, lesser the flame travel distance. You, you can easily combust the fuel. Okay, so when the flame is traveling very large direction or large distance, okay, there is a possibility that uh, there may be some unburnt gas left out, uh, unburnt fuel may be left out, which will lead to carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon emission. Okay, so the main objective is to burn all the fuel inside the combustion chamber by uh, by ensuring uh, by squishing or tumbling it or by swirling it or by Creating turbulence, you need to ensure that you are going to decrease the flame travel. Uh, flame is nothing but the, the, that will happen after the combustion. It means uh, the air and fuel gets uh, mixed, you get the combustion, which means the flame gets traveled. And again, you should not allow the flame to travel to a large, long distance. Okay? You should reduce the distance also. And uh, this is the, uh, the skis and tumble action uh, where there is a combustion chamber. Uh, this is the piston crown, okay, and uh, above the piston, okay, above the piston, and inside uh, here to the, the piston crown, which is the top portion of the piston, you are going to create uh, the, the action, which is nothing but um, the squish, squish action. Um, so, here, uh, if you look at this uh, squish action, what happens is uh, uh, This uh, you get, you are going to get the the, the combustion radially inward, and uh, the radially inward motion of the gas mixture. Okay, the, it comes in a radial direction, and uh, and with this radial inward direction, or the motion of the gas mixture, you call this as a squeeze, and it also adds uh, to another uh, mass within the cylinder to mix uh, air and fuel. And uh, this maximum uh, squeeze velocity will happen uh, uh, before top, before top dead center. Okay? So again, when the piston moves from uh, top dead center to BDC, you get uh, the different uh, uh, pattern. So, but basically, the, the, the data says that the maximum squeeze velocity occurs at about 10 degree before uh, top dead center. Okay? When the piston moves from uh, BDC to BDC and uh, uh, before before reaching the, the DDC position 10 degree, you get the maximum squeeze. 
and we also have a one more term called uh, reverse squeeze okay which will help to spread the flame during the later stage of uh, combustion i told you the flame front or the flame distance should be lesser so that uh, uh, you get a better performance so you need to avoid the reverse squeeze squeeze is always good but when, when the squeeze is going in the reverse direction this is always good where you are allowing the radiant movement of the excess the gas for the for the for the combustion tail phase but when there is a reverse squeeze then it will spread the flame uh, and again and again the flame will travel to the long distance okay so in that again it will also create uh, some uh, issues so it's always good to arrest the reverse squeeze whereas you need to encourage or you need to design such a way you need to provide the squeeze for it and you all have a tumble uh, okay tumble action which is nothing but it's a rotational motion about uh, the circumferential axis near the edge of the clearance volume okay you see here the, the rotational motion is going to happen about the circumferential axis near the edge of the clearance volume uh, basically here you want the piston crown and the piston bow okay in 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 the, in the cylinder so whatever it is what the respect of the, the system configuration either you're going to create a turbulence or a spill or a squeeze or a tumble it's happening inside the, the, the compression chamber which is above the piston okay and it's all dealing about the, the pattern you have the other two very important type called the divider compression chamber uh, and, uh, and the crevice flow and uh, you have these two important uh, Types of uh, the combustion chamber. Uh, one is uh, the, the divided uh, combustion chamber. So here, what happens? Uh, you, I, I told you you have two type of mixture. One is clean mixture and one is thick mixture. Clean mixture is the one where you have uh, high air and less fuel, and the rich mixture is the one where you have more air, more more uh, fuel and less air. Uh, in the case of divided chamber. What happens is uh, uh, this basically we are dealing with the case of AC engine. You have the seventy chamber, and then the, the, the where the seventy chamber you are going to have uh, the rich mixture where almost uh, uh, contains about twenty percentage of uh, clearance volume. So this is going to happen at the clearance volume VC position. Okay, which is about the combustion chamber, uh, and in the case of uh, the main chamber. We are going to have the lean mixture which is above the, the piston which is directly above the piston okay is about directly above the piston okay so you, you are going to divide the compression into two 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 regions one having rich mixture and the one is having the lean mixture okay according to this you can you can divide it and what what is the advantage of this okay uh this primary chamber or the secondary chamber um this will also help to, to expand the flame uh, and the expands it will help to expand but at the same time it will, it will also ensure that it is not going to travel to the higher higher distance okay and this will help for a good ignition and the lean charge uh, in the case of the primary chamber for a good fuel economy this helps for a better uh, mileage also and uh, this, I told you there is a different type of losses are happening in an engine. Global loss, blowdown loss, pumping loss, time loss, heat loss. There are different type of losses which is happening inside the engine. And one one important loss is a global loss where the exhaust gas leak the past piston and ring. Uh, that is nothing but a global loss. So you need to reduce the global loss. So when you reduce the global loss, your engine efficiency also going to be higher. Uh, so to reduce the global loss, you need to you need to you need to have the combustion chamber. You need to design the combustion chamber such a way it is having the crevice flow, crevice flow, which is basically a flow which will which will ensure that you are not going to have the blow by uh, for your system. Uh, this is uh, the, the leakage will happen through the past piston ring, and that goes to the the crankcase. Leakage is nothing but the blow by blow by gas basically, and uh, when it, this is the valve, three phase valve basically the, the cylinder valve basically. Uh, when you have the three phase flow or three phase valve, basically that uh, that will help to arrest the the blow by blow by gas, 
and because when you have a high blow by then what happens is uh, uh, this will also affect your piston when it is affecting the piston uh, piston is basically uh, the power uh, uh, producing uh, part where this will affect your power uh, and sometimes uh, higher the blow by will also sometimes is your piston okay so it's always important to design the composition chamber uh, considering the, the less blow by uh, by by providing the proper crevices to the wall so that the flow will be uniform and you can arrest uh, the blow by uh, this, this all this explanation is again given in chapter number six in a book called clear uh, w uh, third book you can look, look into it we have various designs uh, used on the end of presenting to reduce the blow by by uh, using the, the different devices you can have the different uh, systems or different uh, configurations okay you look at this uh, during the compression stroke what happens is the pressure shoots up okay uh, the pressure goes to the high 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 pressure with the peak cylinder pressure we call uh, so you have three different stages one is the pressure having the high peak cylinder pressure and next one is the pressure between the compression ring and third one is nothing but uh, the crankcase pressure uh, so when combined to the, the cylinder pressure the pressure between the compression ring so you have three type of ring in the case of uh, the piston top ring compression ring and then the oil ring so when the, the pressure between the compression ring uh, you have uh, the Upping and the compression ring, the pressure between the compression rings is going to have the pressure which is lesser than the peak cylinder pressure of the engine. And again, you have the last one is the crankcase pressure, uh, where the excess gas which is leaking the piston ring will go to the crankcase pressure. Uh, so you see the pressure is going to be lesser than the P1 and P2. So what happens is uh, if suppose uh, uh, if in case any any blow by gas occurs, okay, the blow by gas goes to the crankcase and this will also increase the crankcase pressure. Yeah, when the crankcase pressure goes, again what happens? This gives additional load to your cylinder block. Okay, basically, basically your combustion chamber it gives additional load. Uh, when it is doing additional load, uh, it will it will also increase your pressure, which means uh, it will also uh, create some additional pressure uh, build up basically and it will create some uh, problem uh, basically because unless they were creating uh, the additional load the thermal load the form of uh, the, the gas the blow by is nothing the exhaust the gas it is also having the, the, the temperature it is having the load it is having the pressure so this, this will also affect the overall system configuration also so that's why you need to have the, the proper amount of design of the combustion chamber uh, so that uh, you are not going to get a high amount of uh, low by gas. Uh, so you can explain. Uh, you can see all this into the. Okay, this this is a chapter called uh, the fluid motion uh, in the combustion chamber. Within the combustion chamber, uh, this is coming under uh, the chapter number six in a book called Villiers W. Plutarch. Whatever I have given, it is more given in depth and looking to it. Yeah, we have seen uh, the swirling, we have seen the turbulence, and the more details are given here, you can look into it. Okay, so there are some questions which are coming with respect to the speech and tumble system. Let's spend that. Okay. The tumble action is caused by the speech. Is uh, Happening when the piston approaches, uh, when, when the piston is approaching the top dead center. So the piston moves from GDC to BDC during the intake stroke. 
and from BTC to TTC uh, during the compression stroke. Okay, when the piston is moving from BTC to BTC, okay, uh, what happens? The compression takes place. Uh, and again, uh, during the compression, uh, you also going to get uh, the fuel in, in, in injection. Okay, uh, before before target center. So basically, the tumble action is uh, it's been caused uh, by the squeeze again. Uh, I told you squeeze is nothing but the, the, the tangent tangential go uh, of uh, the air. Okay, uh, and again, now I'm telling about the speed descending. With respect to the gasoline, again, the term will vary. Uh, in the case of gasoline, both air and fuel, but now I'm discussing with respect to gas diesel. Then I'll explain about uh, uh, gasoline. So when I talk about the diesel engine, what happens is uh, uh, the tangential flow of air, which is uh, coming to the, the chamber, uh, which is about the uh, piston out. Um, and again, when the piston moves from BDC to DDC. Okay? What happens is uh, the squeeze is open, tumble is still. Squeeze is basically the radial amount of uh, the radial movement, the air coming to the combustion chamber. Whereas this tumble is basically the action which is going to get out of the squeeze when the piston moves from BDC to the, the TDC. And uh, what is called a tumble? Okay, it is basically the tangential motion of uh, the air. When, when the tangential motion of the air, uh, when the piston moves from BDC to TDC, they're going to have a tumble, which is nothing but a rotational motion. This will rotate, okay, about, about the circumferential axis. So it is basically a circumference, okay. The compression, it's basically it is having the layer or a zone where you're going to get the, get the circumferential area for a particular compression chamber, okay. Um, and this is basically the rotational motion because you, you get the rotation uh, rotation of the of the system uh, about the circumferential axis, which is near to the edge of uh, the clearance volume is inside the piston bow or in the cylinder head. Okay, so how I can differentiate the squeeze along with a tumble? Okay, squeeze is basically uh, the air which is coming to the, the tangential direction in the case of diesel. Now when I speak with the petrol, both the air and fuel mixture comes, okay? And uh, this squeeze is basically a tangential movement again. Uh, and again, when the piston moves from BDC to QDC, what happens is it, it, it compresses the one, and again you get, the, in the case of diesel, you get the injection, and in the case of uh, gasoline, you get the ignition. But uh, but you see here, in, in, when it is going to compress, irrespective of diesel engine or a gas engine, uh, you, the, the the air the, the mixture is going to have it is going to behave in a rotational movement. Okay, it is going to have the rotational movement, uh, which is above the, the piston volume or the piston bow, or it is near to the edge of or the, the it is near to the edge of the, the clearance volume. Uh, And what what is important is uh, you need to ensure that you are not going to have more amount of uh, uh, reverse uh, backflow for this. Okay, when you have the reverse squeeze, what what will affect uh, the performance? And again, when you have the reverse during the compression, okay, the, when the piston is moving from BDC to DDC, you will not have a sufficient amount of uh, air fuel mixer or air mixer to compress. Uh, instead, uh, the reverse squeeze, what happens is instead of the tangential movement of the air coming to the compression chamber, the reverse squeeze will, 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 will cause a back pressure, okay, and it will restrict the amount of air going, coming to the freely into the compression chamber. So it causes a reverse effect, uh, and uh, that's the reason uh, we need to avoid the reverse squeeze and we need to go for it. So the details of uh, the, the divided chambers, everything is given here. So 
I told you that uh, you need to avoid uh, the piston powered uh, global gas by providing the upper uh, the devices. The pattern is given. You can have the different pattern. I have explained you uh, the pressure versus crank angle. See, you can also do the simulation using your system, especially uh, the, the mathematical model. So we need to give some inputs for this. So we will see what are all those inputs. Like, uh, you need to consider the engine bore, slope, uh, piston pin offset, cutting rod length, compression ratio, volume diameters, angles, TDC values. You need to give all this as input. Okay? Um, and correspondingly, you get uh, the output in, in, in the case of uh, formula. You see, we have seen the pressure versus volume. Okay. Assuming when the, when the pressure is going to be higher, uh, the pressure is going to be lesser. So this is an example of a general motor simulation. So what is the what is the output you are going to get? Okay, this pressure versus volume will give you the indication of uh, the air movement for your engine. And according to the air movement, and then uh, you are going to get the combustion. And once you get the combustion, you are also going to get the nitrogen oxide emission, carbon monoxide emission, hydrocarbon emission. So how 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 this uh, how you are going to get the output? Okay, considering all the inputs, um, and again you need to consider the adiabatic condition. Uh, there is no uh, heat uh, loss. You need to consider during the simulation. So the, all these details are given there. Uh, you can look into the uh, chapter number six of. Uh, uh, W group work. and uh, there is one more book called John B. I would explain that. Uh, 